morning, everyone. I'm Olga Villaverde. And I'm Amber Mills. Welcome to The Balancing Act. We have got a full show for you today. That's right. From the critical role your pharmacy plays on your medical team. To protecting your password with some James Bond type of technology. Then, twice as nice, Chef Ralph is in the house with a yummy, yummy recipe. We've got all that and more, so let's get cooking. of this year, more than 32 million Twitter passwords were hacked. Then, just two months later, Dropbox reported that a hack in 2012 had leaked more than 60 million usernames. These cyber crimes are costing consumers and companies almost $445 billion a year and putting our privacy and personal information at serious risk. Well, here to talk about what we can do to protect ourselves is Megan Smolders from TrueKey, a multi-factor password app, an Intel security product. Good morning. Hi. All right, so let's talk about this real quick because when I think of threats, I think of viruses and the computers. You know, you hear about that, but today it's much more than that, much more serious. Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, we're our own worst enemy when it comes to being safe online. Why? using the same password on multiple accounts, writing them down in obvious places, using the same one across all of them. I mean, if one of them is ever exposed, you have a great impact of even more. But the problem is there's so many accounts to have, you know, you got the school accounts for the children, you got the bank account. I mean, the list goes on and on. Yep. Everything wants mm -hmm. a password. You can't have the same one. You're going yeah. crazy. So, <laughs> I mean, I kind of have them written down. Some of them are silly. I'm not going to tell you them. Okay, please don't. What, <laughs> what are some of the most commonly used passwords? So believe it or not, in 2015, password. Password was one, one two, of the three. most. Yep, uh, A, B, C, D. Uh, trending movies, Star Wars was a fairly big one also. Um, people are really getting into the creative. And we can't <laughs> do that because people then can figure them out. Exactly. So easily. Very easily. Okay, so what, what do we do? I mean, you have so many things, you have so many accounts, you need to make up with the passwords. What's your advice? So have you heard of a passphrase before? No. Okay. So a passphrase is taking multiple words, random words, and putting them together into a sentence that typically you'd be able to remember. It's still the key part. Um, so things like cow, purple, grass, tall. You know, maybe this is a story <laughs> of something that happened that I can remember easily, but that's a much stronger password than using something as simple as my dog's name. Okay, well, let's try something else. Okay, that yes. sounds complicated yeah, to okay. me. An easier solution, one that's actually highly recommended, is a password manager. So it's an application that you can download and it remembers your passwords for you and fills them in. All right, so fill me in more on that because now there's an app for everything. How does this ha app help me remember the password and make me feel safe? Well, how about I tell you about TrueKey? TrueKey. Yeah, so TrueKey is a password manager that's able to recognize things that are unique about you. Things like your face, your fingerprint. And what it does is from there, it secures all your passwords, it remembers them, and then it fills them into your websites so you don't ever have to remember a password again. So they, that will do it for me and I'm supposed to feel safe about that? Yes, so here I'll tell you how it works. What happens is you download TrueKey on your computer, your phone, or your tablet, and from there, in the background, it works quietly to remember your passwords. If you're going to a website to sign up, it's actually gonna create a unique, strong password for you. And so it stores up, so then the next time you go to that website, it's gonna fill it in. And I'm sure you're thinking, again, all your passwords in one spot. Right. You wanna make sure that's safe. Exactly. So that's what's unique about TrueKey, is with multi-factor authentication, it's able to identify multiple unique things about you. And the more factors you have, the more secure you become. Show me how it works. Definitely. So here I've got my phone. I've got TrueKey installed. Mm -hmm. It's got a few passwords there saved. So then the next time that I want to actually go and log in, I've actually set this is my trusted device, and I'm going to use my fingerprint. It's verified the two things, and it's logged me in. Now let's say I want to do something different. We can actually set up here your face onto this computer so you can log in and see how it works. So I'm going to set up here. So this is also a trusted device. It's Olga's computer. And here it's asking for the facial recognition. So here you can lean in, pull a little James Bond. Oh my it gosh. recognizes you. And it gets me right in. Yeah. And I don't even have to remember a password. No, it not again. It just recognizes. How does it do that? So 
it doesn't take a picture of you. What it does is a mathematical calculation of your face. So it's measuring the distance between your eyes, your nose, your mouth, and then when you go to look, it does a verification to make sure that they're the same, and it logs you in. And then it logs me into everything that matters to me. Exactly, so then from there, you can go to any one of your websites stored within the application. It takes you to the website, it fills it in, and you don't have to type a password ever again. I feel like James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> what about if I'm in a hotel and I don't have the computer with the camera. Great example. So TrueKey, as I mentioned, has multiple factors. You have up to six that you can use. So let's say the computer doesn't have a camera. You go to log in, you can use a different factor. Maybe you can send a device to your uh, notification to your phone. You swipe and it'll unlock it for you. And Megan, I just read uh, recently that the White House started an initiative called Lockdown your login. Yeah, so actually the president wrote a piece in the Wall Street Journal talking about the importance of strong authentication and making sure that people don't just rely on passwords. A password is not enough. And so we're really excited. We're participating in this as a multi-factor strong authentication app that makes it a lot easier for you to be online as well as incredibly safe. Hence the name TrueKey. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> for our viewers out there who'd like more information, where can they go, Megan? Uh, they can go to TrueKey.com, but I definitely think you should try this um, face login just one, one more time. time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> while she's doing it, for more information, again, what is it? TrueKey.com. TrueKey.com. You can also go to our website, and that's thebalancingact.com. I gotta see if this works again. <laughs> oh, there we go. Face recognition, I mean, how cool is that? I love the future. Well, I might not be blonde, although sometimes I wish I was, but nothing beats a delicious blondie sweet treat. Here's our sweetie, Chef Ralph, with the yummy recipe. Turn ordinary baked goods into extraordinary simply by changing a simple ingredient, flour, because not all flour is created equal. Are you ready to see how unique culinary inspired flavors can amp up your baked goods, whether they are sweet or savory? Today, I'm going to show you how to make a sweet nutty. Nutty honey blondies made with white lily bread grape seed premium flour blend. It's an easy recipe to make, and it's so simple, there's only a couple of ingredients. Right here in my bowl, I've got melted butter and honey that are all whisked together. To that, I'm gonna add one egg, and stir it in. I'm gonna add some vanilla extract. And now this is where the magic happens, the white lily wheat flour comes to the party. It's perfect, it's easy, it's great for bacon, and by the way, you can substitute it in any recipe, one for one for all-purpose flour. So the great thing about this blondie, it's a piece of cake to make. I just got the honey, the butter, and I've whisked in the white lily wheat flour. And I'm just gonna finish up here, getting my trusty, dusty wooden spoon, taking a little bit of the walnuts, mix them right in. It's gonna make a nice crunch inside that blondie. And then into my already Greased up oven ready dish, spread it all out nice and even. This is gonna be so lovely and delicious. Into all the little corners. I'm gonna take it, pop it with some of these walnuts. It's that easy, it's gonna go into the oven. 350 degrees, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, check it out after about 25, get to know your blondie, become friends with her. I'm gonna pop it in the oven. Oh man, pulling this out of the oven smells so good. You know, it's not the only thing that I made today. Over here, I made some cheese crackers. And just take a look at this bread. We made it with the white lily red grape seed flour. You know, there's actual red grape seeds in the flour, which gives this bread its unique red tint. It's absolutely fantastic. Now check it out. While I'm speaking about absolutely fantastic, I like to know where my food comes from. White Lily makes it so easy for you. Right here on the back of the package, there's a code. You just type in the code. And you can trace where your flour comes from. Now that is good news for me. Want to know more about this recipe? Check out whitelily.com or our website, thebalancingact.com. And don't forget to share your favorite new recipe with us. This has been a quick bite. But chew slowly.
Your pharmacy plays a critical role on your healthcare team and your pharmacist is one of the most important members of that team. So how can you ensure that you get the greatest benefit possible from your pharmacy when it comes to managing your health? Joining us for a discussion this morning is Jim Farmer, president of America's Best Care Plus and pharmacist Teresa Jackson. Good morning to both of you. Good morning, Olga. I'm so glad we're talking about this because, you know, I feel like nowadays I'm just a patient going to pick up my pills and nobody cares about me anymore, Jim. Oh, I know. It, it's You have to take ownership as a patient of your health care, definitely. And I know you guys are making a difference in kind of creating that personal relationship. And before we talk about that, Teresa, there are many questions as patients that we should be asking before we pick up the me medications. And I want to exactly. share some with our viewers. So let's, okay. let's look at the first one. Oh, this one's huge. Money-wise, of course. Sure. Is there a generic version? Right. It's important to know that and ask for that when you go to the pharmacy because many times patients don't think to ask about that. And the pharmacist can help you with that information as to whether there is a generic available or not. Also, if there is a generic available, it's going to be the same active ingredient. So although it may look differently as far as the shape and the size and the color, the active ingredient is the same. Another thing to know is most insurance companies will require generic substitution if it is available. Let's look at another one that's great to ask. Are there any major side effects or special instructions? Very, very important. Very important. It's very important to know what you're taking and uh, how to avoid some of the side effects. Do you, do your doctor may go over those with you, and the information that you get from the pharmacist, the monograph, it has a lot of information, but it can be overwhelming. And so the pharmacist can help you weed through that and help you to know what you need to know. And this one is imperative. What if I miss a dose? Right. For example, if you're taking blood pressure, that's important. It is very important. And it does happen occasionally for whatever reason. It's important to know what you need to do, and the pharmacist is a great resource for that to tell you what you need to do in that situation. Now, Jim, as the president of a mail order pharmacy, how is this technology and your company making a difference to kind of bridge that gap that I feel is lost between patient and pharmacist today? So many patients now are looking to online or, or mail order pharmacies because it's more convenient. And in many cases, we're talking about patients and caregivers who live in the rural areas. I grew up in a small farming town. And, uh, you know, there weren't a lot of resources around necessarily. So getting I, to a pharmacy is almost impossible. In, in many cases, that's true, yes. And so it was, it's imperative that we were able to offer a service. Now, you know, my mother died at 48 from, from complications with COPD. I'm so sorry. So it's something we're very passionate about and caring for our patients. You know, if, if my mother had had better access, perhaps she'd still be around now. But, you know, again, one of those drivers for my passion for making sure we're ta we take care of our patients. And one of the problems also, if I may tell you, is adherence, like having a patient stick to the medication and remember to take it. So how do you help? Okay, that's, that's a great question. And we assign a patient care team member to each one of our patients and, care, and, and caregivers. Oh. So these care team members will reach out to our patients on a monthly basis. And remind them. And remind them and ma make sure they're doing okay. Because that's important. And it is important because let me show you this stat and let me share it with my viewers. According to pharma.org, 2 million Americans use three or more medicines daily with 75% of adults that are non-adherent in one or more ways, meaning they're not sticking to the medication. This economic impact of non-adherence is costing the U.S. $100 billion annually. Now that's amazing. So you're helping uh, prevent that. If you can't manage your medications, you're not gonna live a healthy, full life. So we help in that regard and by reaching out to that patient, like I mentioned earlier, and making sure they have all that they need as far as their Medicare. Even I mean, information on the medication, the knowledge that they need to know? Absolutely. They, our patients ask questions of us that they ordinarily wouldn't take the time to ask their pharmacist locally because we have a relationship. And Teresa, if I may ask, as a pharmacist for the company, it's very personal. It almost becomes like a family. Oh, well, sure. Yeah. You, some of these patients uh, look forward to that call each month. And then sometimes they'll want to speak to me or one of the other pharmacists. And a lot of times they just need us to listen to what they have to say. They're not really asking for anything, any information they don't already know. They just need to know that someone cares. And how can we trust if we're getting our prescription from a reputable company? Because that's really important. It is important. And so it's, it's so vital that our patients and caregivers research their pharmacy providers. When you're dealing with, with uh, mail order or online pharmacies, you have to do your research. Make sure that that pharmacy is established. Make sure that they have the appropriate state licensure. Make sure that they're, if, if needed, in, in, in a Medicare beneficiary's case, make sure they that they're uh, certified by Medicare. But also make sure they're accredited. America's Best Care Plus is accredited by two accrediting bodies in the country. One is ACHC, which is a general health care accrediting mm -hmm. body, and the other is PCAB, uh, which is a compounding 
uh, pharmacy accrediting body. Only 2% of pharmacies in the country are accredited by that, that agency, and we're one of those. Um, so, you know, it, it's important to vet those pharmacies. Look, there's other research you can do as well. You want to look to see if those pharmacies have been uh, the target of, of legal activity. Mm. Uh, it's very important. Um, also, if you get a phone call from a pharmacy soliciting your business, are they being super aggressive? That's not what you want. Um, if they're being super aggressive trying to secure an order versus taking care of you as their customer, as their patient, then you probably need to look for another provider. Thank you so much for your time. I do appreciate it. Jim, thank you very much as well. Thank you so much, Olga. And if you'd like to learn more information about America's Best Care Plus, go to americasbestcareplus.com. That's americasbestcareplus.com. Or visit our website, thebalancingact.com. All right, what do you say we kick the tires, Amber? Don't tread on me, Olga. <laughs> All right, so the puns, but seriously, making sure your car is in tip-top shape is very important. Yeah, it's no joke. So here's Debbie Marie with some travel tips on tire safety and more. Travel tips brought to you by Sunoco. On the racetrack or the road home. Sunoco, fueling victories every day. When you're driving, nothing is as important as the ability to stop quickly. And we're not just talking about your brakes. Having good tires is as equally important. But how do you know when it's time to replace your tires? You can use a regular tread depth gauge, which we think is a really great tool, and a pinch. Look how easy. And speaking of pinch, you could also use a penny. Place a penny into several tread grooves across the tire. If part of Lincoln's head is always covered by the tread, you have more than two-thirds of tread depth remaining. But would you believe many tire retailers are saying that the penny is outdated and now they want us to use a quarter? Well, okay, let's use a quarter. So do the same thing and put a quarter into the tire groups. Most U.S. state laws indicate tires are legally worn out when tread wears down to two-thirds of an inch. So if you're above that, you're probably within the law. But keep in mind that even though tires may be street legal, not having enough tread can pose other dangers, like not being able to stop quickly and safely in rain or snow or hydroplaning at fast highway speeds. Be sure to check in various places several times throughout the year. You can also increase tire life and tire safety by keeping your tires inflated properly. And to do that, we use this, a tire gauge, and it's very easy to do. You can check the recommended pressure for your car on the driver's side or the owner's manual. Be sure to check the pressure in the tires when the tires are cold to get the most accurate reading. And if they're not at the pressure that the manufacturer suggests for your car, go ahead and add some air. Well, that's it for now. Be sure to visit a Sunoco station, A Plus, or Stripes convenience store to fuel up, air up, and snack up before your next trip. We'll see you next time. Happy trails. Travel Tips has been brought to you by Sunoco. On the racetrack or the road home. Sunoco, fueling victories every day. Well, it's time to say goodbye for today. Remember to head to our Facebook page and our website. Follow us on Twitter. We've got lots more there. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.